To add color to our beautiful flower paintings, we're gonna begin with oil pastels. We're using neon colors to make them extra bright and colorful. So they'll have lots of variety when it comes to adding color. Um, so you're just gonna start coloring your petals of your flowers inside the white shapes with some oil pastels. You're gonna use them just like a crayon. You're gonna color up and down or side to side like a crayon and make sure you fill in the white paper of each shape so that it's solid. Don't leave it like that. Color it in all the way. You're gonna notice that these little oil pastels make crumbs on your paper or little pieces that flake off. If you see that, just blow them off like that or just leave them there and they become part of the painting. What you don't wanna do, you do not want to sweep them off because if you sweep them, you will create a nasty smudge or mark on your paper. Some of your shapes or your petals can be colored with two different colors. For example, one side of my leaf is blue and the other side is green. Um, and you wanna do the same thing sometimes with the inside of your petals. For example, I'm gonna color the outside of this petal in a pattern, green, I'm gonna leave a space and then green. And then I'm gonna skip that one, and this one will be green too. I think I'm gonna leave them white for right now because I'm thinking of using watercolor later on these shapes. So later I'm gonna show you how we're gonna add watercolor to, to our beautiful flowers. So what you're gonna do right now is just color a little bit of each flower with oil pastels and leave part of each flower white. So leave a little bit of each of your flower petals with at least one white shape or two shapes if you'd like, so that you can add watercolor in a little bit or later. We're gonna add two types of materials today to add color, watercolor and these oil pastels. So I think I'm gonna leave the center of this white so that I can add watercolor in that spot. Now, when you're using these, you might wanna turn your paper so that your wrist doesn't rest in oil pastel because it does need to dry. It's a little waxy and messy, so it will smear and get your hand dirty. So just be careful. You can turn your paper or get in the habit of lifting your wrist up so it doesn't touch the pastel. Today we're coloring flowers and leaves. Those are called organic shapes because they are created by nature. Things that live and grow in nature like animals and plants and people are called organic shapes. Other examples of organic shapes could be the weather like lightning bolts. Those are organic shapes. Um, stars in the sky, the moon, the sun, those are organic shapes too. So we're definitely using a lot of organic shapes in our Heather Galler inspired flower paintings. I'm gonna work on one more flower that doesn't have any oil pastel and I'm gonna try to use a color that I haven't used yet. I'm gonna leave the center of the flower white and then I'm gonna add watercolor on the middle layer. And then I'll decide what to do with that third layer. We're gonna add some watercolor on each flower. So that's why I'm leaving each flower, part of it, white. I'm lifting up my wrist because it's kind of hard for me to get to this petal without resting my hand. When we're coloring, we color up and down or side to side, and we try our best to stay inside the black paint lines so that we're showing neatness, trying to not go outside of the lines. All right, now I think I will color the outside. Let me think of a color I haven't used a lot or I haven't used yet. You can repeat colors, of course. Just make sure that when you're using the same color, Try not to put them next door to each other. For example, if I used two light greens, I put them kind of far apart on this flower and then way over here on this leaf. If they're side by side, that's not really showing a lot of variety. If it happens a little bit, then don't worry about it, but try 
to hop around to different areas when you're repeating colors. All right, all of my flowers, I think, have a little bit of oil pastel on them. Don't forget about your leaves, or of course you can paint some of those white spaces with watercolor, okay? Yes, I'm double checking. All of my flowers have, and leaves, have a little bit of oil pastel and some room left for watercolor. Just add a couple more spots of color on this leaf. All right. Once you're done with the oil pastels, you can move on to watercolor. Notice that I did not use oil pastel on my vase or my table. That's very important. Do not use oil pastel on your vase or your table. Now, we're gonna move on to watercolors. Your watercolors are gonna be in a container. Please keep them in the container in case they spill. I would much rather it spill in the container than on your lovely paper, but we are trying to be very careful. When we hold our brush, we grip it like a pencil right behind the silver part, which we call the danger zone. We don't wanna put our hands on the silver part of the danger zone because if we do that, our hand is in danger of getting wet with paint or dirty. So move it back right behind the silver part and grip it like a pencil. We don't grip it like this, grip it like a pencil. And we also don't hold it in the middle or at the top of the handle. Make sure it's right behind the danger zone. And then of course we have our bristles, our little hairy part of the brush, which is only for water, paint, paper, and the sponge. We don't wanna to touch the bristles with our fingers, okay? All right, now we're gonna begin painting. Please remember that when you're painting, your brush needs to stay on its tippy toes like this. We don't wanna mash our brush down like that that is called the booty scootin' ballet because if you do that, your brush will be scooting around on its bottom and that's not allowed. So make sure that your bristles are gently touching the paper to paint so that you don't have a mash down brush like that. Okay, you're gonna get several colors of watercolor. The first time you use it, you don't need to clean your brush because it's already clean. When you switch colors, we are gonna clean our brush and I'll show you that in a minute. My bristles are nice and pointed. I'm using blue to color in some of my white shapes of my flower. I'm gonna use blue again before I clean my brush. So I'm gonna hop around to another spot so that I don't have to clean my brush so much. So when you're using a color, pick a spot where you can add that color several different places. And just like before, we don't wanna put blue watercolor shapes side by side. So I kind of hopped around from here to over here instead of having them side by side. I'm gonna leave these shapes around my blue over here for another color. I think I'm ready to switch though. So to switch colors, you're gonna clean your brush in your doggy dish. Don't pick it up. I'm just picking it up so I can show you. You find the, the pan and you brush, kind of brush the bottom of your pan, tap, 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 and then wipe, wipe on dirty old SpongeBob. Okay, if you need to do that more than once, go ahead. So your brush is very clean before you're switching colors. I'm coloring my petals now, those white spaces that I left white around my oil pastel. You're not painting on top of your oil pastel. These are gonna be separate shapes. So make sure you don't get any paint on top of your oil pastel. If you accidentally drip, just leave it. It'll become part of the painting. Okay, now let's see if I need to use my watercolor, my orange anywhere else before switching. I think I'm ready to switch. So I'm gonna clean my brush. Okay, now I'm ready to use a color that I haven't used yet. And keep your paper laying flat the whole time. If you lift it up to show a neighbor or to show Miss Dalma, you may have drippy watercolor all the way down your paper. Now, another thing we're gonna think about is how we're gonna paint this vase or the table. We're going to be using watercolor for the vase or the table. Notice I said vase or table. So you're gonna decide one of them's gonna be left black and white and one of them is gonna be painted with watercolor because we want to show contrast. Contrast is when you see differences or opposites in your works of art. So your table and your vase. One of them's gonna be colorful, the other one's not gonna be colorful. So make a decision. I think I'm gonna paint my table with 
watercolor and leave my vase black and white. I'm gonna move on to that area for you and I'll finish my flowers later. If you have a pattern like I do, maybe you can paint your shapes or your lines with two different colors or three different colors. A pattern is something that repeats. So for example, my pattern here is green circle, green circle, green circle. And then the table or the empty space or the negative space around my circle is gonna be a different color. When your brush makes a scratchy line or a scratchy sound, it's telling you that it's thirsty and it needs more paint. So when your brush makes a scratchy line, you can get a little bit more paint. I'm gonna clean my brush and paint in my negative space on my table or the white part. And it's so beautiful. I love the way the green and the pink looks. I'm gonna finish this up. I'm gonna finish my table and I'm leaving my vase white and black. Remember, when it's your turn, you choose your vase or your table. One's colorful with watercolors. The other one, leave it white and black so you can show some contrast. Don't forget to finish your petals up with oil pastel, leave some white spaces and paint the white, some of the white spaces with watercolor. We are not painting the wall or this negative space around our flower. We're leaving that completely white today and we're gonna work on that another time. I'm gonna speed up my next demonstrations, but remember when it's your turn, you go nice and slow, nice and neat, have fun.